Well, everybody, I want to really tell you, I'm going to welcome myself back because it's been quite a while since we've recorded. We The last recordings we did, we pounded out like th- four, three, four or five of them at one event. Yeah, we haven't recorded weekend. in like a month. And I've been gone and uh, it is good to be home. I know, and I have to say this, that there were people that were in um, Aussie land that said, we would love to have lunch with dad. And I really must apologize to you. I'm going to give you a, a quick clue. Um, the woman that I see wanted to go with me. And I said, you're welcome to come, but don't expect to see me because I'm going to be flooded with work. And I did find time. We posted one little Instagram video with some of the people that I was working with. And that was kind of fun. But um, there really was no time. I told Morgan today that I this last week I had five nights <clears throat> prepaid for my hotel and I slept there two nights because I worked straight through the other the other evenings and days just to get back here because you guys said, we're going off to London and have you got to be back here? And I said, I will be home. Yep. So it's great to be back and start fresh with our whole new series and um, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, you're fresh. I am, well, I'm, I don't know if I'm fresh. I've <laughs> been, on been, on, been in airplanes forever, but uh, I do have my Mickey Mouse socks on. You hey, do, well, yes. Well, yeah, you got to really <clears throat> hold them up. Those are your Mickey Mouse pride socks. Ah, and um, I'm just ready to go. So you didn't uh, bring back the accent. I did not bring back the accent. I, I tried I try to, you know, ace the mate, might. So do you think you'll go back as for not work? Uh, well, I, when we did the grand opening, there were th- there were two other synagogues that were there that approached me. And said, "We are, we we love what you did here. Can you do something for us?" And I said, "Everything I do is custom. I have to meet with you. We have to talk about it and find out what your vibe is. And I can then hopefully I'll come up with something crazy." So maybe if you do it not in the crazy busy summertime, Morgan and I can join, and then we could do a father knows something lunch. We could. We can. We can do a massive lunch. I like the idea. We can do a a lunch. Sounds I think good. I think we should do a you know, like a giant barbecue picnic with you know put a little shrimp on the barbie mm. that kind of thing. I mean, I think it would be a lot of fun. And I also would like to go up to um, and I didn't. By the way, I, guys, I didn't do any tourist things. I never even got to the opera house. Yeah, I wanted to go see Miss Saigon the other night and go to the opera house and do it. And I I got stuck. Something somebody yeah. broke a wire, and I was up all night trying to find this wire that was oh, toasted. Man. And, Man, there you go, man. figure. So I'd love to go back. I'd love to go to the Barrier Reef. Yeah. And well, next time you got to give yourself a little extra time for some like. fun. I would love to do that. I wanted to record a show any way we could out there. And in, in fact, find some people to invite on that were from, you know, that, you know, from that part, that territory. And I thought that would be a lot of fun because people have different values and different ways of looking at things. It's like when we had the show with grandma. I really thought that would be really interesting because she grew up in a whole different time. And I wanted to see where that would go. Yeah, her her takes were really good. I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do this. So the first theme I have is the last theme that our intern Lucy put together before she left. Mm -hmm. So the notes I have from her, she's calling this theme kind of happy wife, happy life, keeping a partner slash marriage happy giving people in your life a second chance. So kind of second time around. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what the title is by the time we're done. So really it's happy partner, happy relationship, happy team, happy relationship, happy partner, happy life. But you got to have your happiness too. Yeah. It all starts with you. It all starts starts within ourselves. So we will see what we come up with it by the time we get done reading all these stories. I have not read a single one of them. Well, I Justin can... has not either, so we're all going in blind. Swing away, kid. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, so this is going to be the new number one. That will make sense for everyone when you get to number two. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're uh, conf- yeah. You're confused, but it all makes sense for everyone in a second. Okay. okay. I, 23 female, just graduated undergrad and I'm going into grad school in the fall. My partner, 25 male, just graduated grad school. 
We got married earlier this year. We have been dating since I was 18, and it was sooner than we would have planned, but due to some extenuating circumstances, we decided to get married earlier than we planned. Note, we were planning on getting married after I graduate grad school, so it's only about a year earlier. The last two months of his final semester in school were very busy. He barely had time to talk on the phone or text, and he couldn't come up for my birthday. This frustrated me because it was my golden birthday. During those two months, he made new friends. His closest friends were a grade below him. Since he has graduated, though, he said he doesn't know if he has feelings for me anymore, but needs to process it more. However, he is currently on a trip across the country, staying at one of his friend's house. The thing is, he is constantly texting that friend when we are together, and now he is barely texting me now that he's on a trip with them. I'm trying to let him enjoy his trip, but our dog just had surgery, so there are some important things I need to talk about. We had a heart-to-heart the other night, and he says he wants to try and figure out his feelings for me, but he also said that he enjoyed hanging out with his friends more than he does with me. How should I go about this? Should I start to distance myself? We have a two-bedroom apartment, so I could go in the other bedroom, but I can't afford to live on my own. I think I need to start to distance myself, but I was head over heels and wanted to have a family with him. I'm still in shock that he is no longer in love with me. Things sometimes change. People grow. They, they don't grow together. And the thing that you have to do is realize it and recognize it and do the, the appropriate thing for, your, for you going forward and to make sure that you have your fulfilled life. So it is sounding like it's on the it's on the decline that it's time to, you know, move on and look, you can move on and he may have a, a, one of those moments that he says, Oh my God, look what I did. And then you can make that decision where you are at that time, if you're over it or you want to give it a shot. But in the event that it doesn't, at least you've moved forward and you've, you've opened that door. He, he's not asking you to keep the door closed for him. He's really inviting you to open it. It seems that way. Um, This person's ideal outcome is staying together. I I see that. And so it's hard. I mean, they're married. They're not just dating. I mean, they, they got married. So they were making that commitment to each other. So this kind of turnaround from him, I mean, if if I were this person in this, I would feel like I just got whiplash. This is a very quick flip of a switch by the sounds of it. You know, but some people say you have to just stay married and, and, and grin and bear, you know, grin and bear it until you, you can't bear it anymore. It might just be time just to call it, call it what it is and move on and take it with the less pain and not waste this time that you can, that you'll be wasting uh, to spend with someone who really wants to be with you rather than somebody who just rather be with us with, with these other people. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think that you're going to have to follow, you know, follow your own gut in this one that, to really know where it is and what to do about it. And if you say, "Look, you know, let's," we realize we shouldn't be together anymore, and I, you know, let's make an easy divorce. Let's see what his reaction is when you bring up that word. He might just say, "Sure, great, let's do it." Otherwise, he'll, he may say, "What are you talking about?" Right. So, yeah. don't be afraid of the word. I think being more proactive with the word uh, might work better in this circumstance. Would you consider that a little manipulative, though? No. It's not a I don't threat. Think I, it's like no. It's, I think that you go in with the, with the full with the full intention of saying, "Yeah, I'm I." Not, well, and I think I just want to make sure, like our listener gets, like divorce is not a threat. No, like, you can't use it as a threat. You no. have to mean that and just say like. I'm willing to get divorced. Like we're not happy. You're not happy. I'm not happy. So, but in all reality, it might bring out the, the truest truth. Mm-hmm. It will make everyone actually reveal their, yeah. deck, their, their hand. Yeah. And you'll see everyone's cards for real when you actually start to go down that route. So yes, you're not using it as a threat, but it almost operates as a threat because it will force him to show his cards. And this is actually like my biggest fear. I think I've said that on this show before. Someone just falling out of love with you 
because you can't do anything about it. Mm -mm. You can't be mad at anybody. Mm -mm. You can't control, like there's no, it just happens to you. You instantly end up in your worst nightmare just cause, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't be pissed. You can't be like, you know, you cheated on me. You did all this and you took this down. Literally, it's just done mm -hmm. and you have no control over it. And that's the scariest part for me about being in a relationship mm -hmm. by far. Yeah. Mm. When do you know it's worth giving a second chance? I mean, Lucy kind of put this theme as like giving people in your life a second chance and second time around. Do you think, you know, if she wanted to give this a second chance, it would be smart to go in the other room, have separate rooms and maybe go back to like the first steps of like, let's see if we like each other. Let's try, you know, dating again, even though we're married, you know, you can date. Mm -hmm. You should, if you're married, you should always be dating your partner. Right, I think. But, but let me ask you a question. When, when she goes to him and says, look, this is what's going on. Do we need to do this? I mean, this is what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. And do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to offer this conversation before we do it? That's his opportunity to say, you know something? I would like to try something along this line. If he doesn't speak up, what is she dicking around for? It's really. Well, yeah. And I think living situation is a consideration. She can't live on her own. They do have a two bedroom. So it might. You fade out. You might. Yeah. It might be good mm -hmm. to, you know, split up you each get your own room go back to just being friends and maybe ask to see other people and if that is preferred after you know you guys start seeing other people you realize your marriage isn't gonna work i was seeing carla we when we decided to move in i said look there's no guarantee on anything where we're gonna go but i'm willing to try to see where it is i'm letting you know i do not want a roommate should we not work out this is, these are the rules we have to kind of go into. And we, do, we did try a relationship and it did not work out for us to be a couple. And she says, are you just, you're going to throw me the street? And I said, of course not. I mean, I, I was very clear in the beginning, but I understand where you're at. I want you to, to go to another room and let's see, you know, get yourself on, you know, where you can get to the part of moving that I don't want to have a permanent thing here. But see, you know, how it works out for you. And within about six months, you know, she had met somebody else. She dated quite a few people until she met somebody else. I was totally, you know, understanding as a friend that she is dating. She's going to be intimate with somebody else. I even said you could be intimate with him in the house. I don't care. This is your room. This is your door. And I think these two could get to that by the sounds of it. Maybe. And it worked. So, yeah. And that works. It so, could be healthy if done very... Adult. Adult. You communicate very open mm -hmm. up front. Um, and I think that, unfortunately, like the ideal outcome is staying together. But that might be the best first step is to, you know, it will, take some time apart. It will bring change one way or the other. The yeah. change of you getting close again and, and getting to the part where you want to have a marriage or to where you guys are friends and realize that we're not really the couple that we thought we were going to be ultimately. And, but get, but with no hostility because no one lied here. There's no, the problem when people get, get hostile is because there's deceit mm -hmm. or insecurity. If you're totally open and totally direct about everything, you kind of get rid of that. You kind of get rid of that pin. That no be. lying that we know of. There's three things sticking out. He, he missed a very big birthday. Right. He could be lying. He said he is questioning his feelings. Mm -hmm. He texts this other person all the time, and now he's staying with them for a long period of time mm -hmm. and won't text her. He's showing all the signs that he's just too scared to end it and mm -hmm. hoping she does over all these things he's doing. He is being weak. Yeah. I mean, it. when you read through the lines, mm -hmm. it feels like these are all signs. Like... Mm -hmm. He's trying to not have to be the one to pull the trigger. Right. Yeah. Which is what a lot of guys do, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep us posted. We wish you the best. It's going to be tough. I mean, they've been together since um, our writer was 18. And yeah. mm -hmm. that I think is hard. Moving on from your first big loves is hard. 
but it, it gets better. And what's really interesting, I remember moving, having a lot of these same things with my first love. Mm -hmm. I had a discussion with you about this the other day. Yeah. I did. And I said, you know, if, if I wish it was a lot of it's timing. I said, at the end of the day, would I have been happy ultimately in a, with a life with her? I believe I would have been. I would have loved to have had that life because I think we we were really suited all the way, you know, except for my immaturity of being 24 and wanting to go explore the world and, or, and have sex with the world. And that would, it, the relationship never would have survived it. She probably wanted to have sex with the world too. And was probably, you know, and in some, in, in, in some, modes we did i mean we certainly had alternative partners but i wanted to you know just go and f yeah so your whatever. wild oats as yeah, they say it was weird but as i got older and i realized that i that we are friends and we have we have a connection and there were certain things that were there so i definitely later on in life questioned it did i make the mistake or not and what would have it been but you just can't live that way though you don't you no. just no and with that, I do think like there are some people that do come back together, mm -hmm. you know. They find each other again. Yeah. I look at my brother and his wife and they broke up and were done for a long time and, you know, they came back together. And I think in order for someone to find you and come back to you, though, you need to start respecting yourself and knowing what you deserve. Mm -hmm. And I think you deserve better than what you're getting right now. Mm -hmm. I think, And I think that goes for a lot of people out there where... They might be holding out hope for their partner to change and become better for them because they love them. But you're accepting a level that you don't need to. And, you know, maybe if you respect yourself more and your time more, the right person will come along or that person's going to realize they can't keep walking all over you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes walking away is the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Well, and and just think how refreshing it would be to all of a sudden have someone that's just obsessed with you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, my God. Why did I hold out so long? Why what was I why was I holding myself back from this? Yeah, it's uh that is like quite the reality check is like I look at my past relationships and like I'm like honestly compared to now, I don't think those people even liked me compared to like how like Justin is just obsessed, like loves me so much, makes me feel so good, comes to my rescue whenever I need it. Like that level of love and respect is something I've never had. And you look and like in hindsight, you're like, wow, why did I put myself through that? Mm -hmm. So it's all perspective and context. And also that's why it's so good to have a lot of these experiences before you find your person instead of, you know, some people do find them right away like this and it works out. And then you just, you just had it on the first try. Mm -hmm. but going into further relationships, like if you go into ones after this, you'll now have the context of this. You'll be able to pick up on red flags really quick. The more you date, the more you start to find like, oh, I didn't even know this existed, but I like this. This is what I really wanted. It's kind of like when you are scrolling on your phone and things pop up that you would have never thought to buy ever, right. ever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're buying them. It's they, It creates a need. <laughs> Yeah. It'll all work out though. One thing I have learned so far in life is that everything does work out. It does. So just trust your gut and follow your path and protect your heart and know your worth and it'll all work out. I agree. Okay. Moving along. One of this week's partners is KiwiCo. KiwiCo believes that every kid is naturally creative and curious and that hands-on experiences can build creative confidence and problem-solving skills that can truly change our world. I was just home in Minnesota visiting and I opened up a new KiwiCo kit with my niece and nephew and let me tell you, these kids were engaged, having fun and challenging themselves in ways that I've never seen before. And KiwiCo is for kids of all ages. Seriously, these kits work for anyone zero to 100. So if you have a baby who might not be ready for these big chemistry kits yet, there's sensory mats and other amazing activities. And these kits were designed by experts including educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting, age-appropriate, and educational projects for your little ones. And there's no commitment with KiwiCo. You can pause or cancel at any time. And with the code I'm about to give you, these kits are really affordable. 
So if you're ready to try it for yourself, redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash FKS. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash FKS. The story you're about to hear right now for number two was actually the first one we recorded But because I didn't want to have us get demonetized on YouTube, it got moved to number two. So here you go. Okay, up first. First of all, I love listening to you and two hot takes. I wish you all the success in the world. I'm a 23-year-old female, and I got married to my husband, 25 male, in 2021. We both waited until marriage to have sex. We are each other's first, but I'm struggling to enjoy sex. It's not what I thought it would be, and it's making me question our connection. Before marriage, we were sexually active with each other using hand play and oral. It was great. Fast forward, it no longer hurts to have sex, but it's just not fun for me. We do climax every time for the record. I try to communicate with him during, before, and after sex about my wants, but he sometimes gets awkward, frustrated, or just does what he wants. His reactions make me feel embarrassed for being bold on what I want, and sometimes it feels rushed. He also requests that I put his condom on for him, even after showing him how to do it millions of times. He says he doesn't trust himself, and we don't want to get pregnant right now, so I do it for him just in case. It's a turnoff when he does this, and we have sex around every two weeks due to our conflicting work schedules and sex drive. I don't know what to do. I don't want to hurt his feelings, and I don't want to force sex if I am not in the mood. I don't want to settle for a boring sex life after waiting, and I am getting frustrated. I know Morgan is a big advocate for couples therapy, but what if he doesn't want to do that if I suggest it for us? Please help. Ideal outcome is to have a fulfilling sex life. I got to process this one. (laughs) I'll go. I really just went for it. Okay, go first. I think from a guy's perspective, anything to do with critiquing sexual activity Mm -hmm. uh, is always taken very personal, especially when you're younger and you, you don't, you know, I, yeah, you've been with one person from his perspective, you've been like with one person and uh, there obviously are benefits to exploring sexuality with multiple partners uh, or with your current partner before, you know, you get to the big steps. But I understand that some people don't and I respect that. But in this case, you're doing all the right things. You're trying to communicate. You're trying to do a lot of these different things. But this is like, as I say, one of those main pillars of a relationship. If you can't get on the same page, then it's not looking too bright going forward unless you can communicate. What about, you know, sharing each other's fantasies? What about just go out and go off the wall with him? I mean, go bring in some implements, bring in other other things, introduce. Uh, when he walks in, he walks in on you masturbating in a way that you enjoy that, of, of being touched. So it's not an embarrassing thing, but you say, I want you to be a part of this. I want you to see what I what I like. And show me what more you like. I mean, if you guys can't be honest with your fantasies and things of that, of trying things new and talking in a in a uh, in a subject line of that will that w- he may find a ri- arousing, um, don't be afraid of it. You got you got you're going to have to hit that bridge and and cross it because that's going to open these doors of what you guys like and and trying and exploring. It really is trying new things. I think that's probably a part of the problem though, because it sounds like our writer here does really try to communicate. I try to communicate with him during, before, or after sex about my wants, but he sometimes gets awkward, frustrated, or just does what he wants. So I think a big part of this is probably his self-esteem, his confidence, his ego, He, you know, kind of like Justin said, like he's taking this communication Mm -hmm. as a critique, not communication. Mm -hmm. And that's where you really have to like sit down when you're not having sex, when you're not vulnerable, Mm -hmm. when you're just fully clothed on a couch, enjoying a movie night and say, hey, 
I'd love to chat about sex. It's it's good, but I want to get us to a place where we're both really loving it, really excited. And when I, you know, give comments, it's not a critique. It's just like me just wanting to try something a little different mm-hmm. to maybe make it a, like way better. Mm-hmm. It's good, but like, could it be a little better in like certain areas? Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I know it's easy to take personally. Like, you know, you might have some changes you'd like me to make. I'll try to take them without getting offended and taking it personal. Mm -hmm. I'll try to do my best. But I think you got to have a conversation outside of sex and really just get on that page of like, this is not a critique. This is not criticism. This is just me trying to communicate. Well, and to tie it back, if you haven't had the experiences before marriage, Mm -hmm. now is your time to explore. It's, You're going to do it yeah. with your one partner, but it's time to explore and find all those things because you never have in the past. This is a free for all. Yeah. You, you got don't the know rings. what you like even. You maybe. got the rings, you got the person. And honestly, like it does good. sound like chemistry is there. Like if you're climaxing every time, true. it sounds like you know how to push each other's buttons. Like the chemistry seems like it's there. It's just that that extra 10%. And there's also forms that are out there that will really explain different things that you, you know, I would be reading the other forms and learning and maybe Pornhub or maybe one of the, the other things that might show other ways of having sex and enjoying it and things that feel good. There's stuff out there. There's plenty of, plenty of when it comes to, you know, sex and marital aids, there's shit shitloads of crap out there well and i do think a couples therapist would be amazing Mm -hmm. even for a couple sessions um you guys are young newlyweds you're coming from a place with you know i don't know what your dating relationship experience was Mm -hmm. before this but at least limited intimate experience and i think a couples therapist could could really give you ways to communicate Mm -hmm. and not hurt each other and have it be communication and not critique. And and him and you putting the prophylactic on him might be a turn on for him. That is true. It might yeah. be something he likes where you're handling him and you know it he finds that intimacy and he likes that intimacy. But at the same time it could be a turn off for her, for her which so, he needs to know. And how can he fix that if she doesn't or if he if he doesn't know, right? Yeah. There's a lot of that in these. What about other other ways of birth control? I would rather use a condom than be on the pill. I haven't been on the pill since 18. The pill is very, very hard on a lot of people's uh, What about bodies. IUDs, diaphragms? Um, well, condoms are really easy. That's all people's choices, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, to each their own. But um, yeah, I personally do not. I'm not on birth control. I haven't been for a long time. Um, and I think a lot of women nowadays are having that same struggle of like birth control really hurt my health. Well, it's not um, even the condom that's really the problem. It's, it's just the putting, putting it on. on. Mm-hmm. Literally. So it's like, that's when you're not in the act, these are easy things to bring up, or they should be. If you're a married couple, this stuff should be simple mm-hmm. to bring up. I know it's kind of a bigger conversation because, it's, again, it's one of those pillars, but there's a lot of hope here. It's not oh, like, a, oh, this, yeah. this isn't like, I'm not seeing a downhill. I'm seeing like an uphill. And, you know, you got to, communicate and hike up the hill to get there. They're at, they're at the gate. They can open up and they have a whole new plethora of, of fun to to. to yeah, achieve. you never know. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a lot of couples therapy um, that's online nowadays. Like if he's nervous about going or there's, there's ways to make it really approachable. Um, there also is a person that I started following on Instagram a while ago named Emily Morse. She has this whole... I think it's like a brand called like Sex with Emily. She Mm -hmm. might even have a podcast, but um, her stuff is really, really good. We also really do want to get a sex therapist on. We have an abundance of sex related stories, Mm -hmm. but um, for others out there that may have been in this same position, it would be amazing to hear your takes. I just want to point out too, for this listener and anyone else listening, like there's a comment here, like, Fast forward, it no longer hurts to have sex. Mm -hmm. And sex shouldn't be painful. Mm -mm. If it is painful, 
This is something you should be talking to your doctor about. Maybe it's time for pelvic floor therapy. There's abundance of things you can do. Maybe you're just not lubricated enough. I mean, there's a bunch of what ifs with that, but sex should not be painful. Um, and so for those out there, yeah, that typically if, it is, if it's, if, if a woman is dry and she is not well lubricated, it's not pleasurable for the guy either. He feels it just as, just as rough as you do. It's hard. So yeah. take your time. <laughs> That's foreplay is very important. Take your time. Let do you know, do you know that, um, having foreplay for at least 20 minutes increases orgasm by 60%. Really? Increases the chances, yeah. 60%. So foreplay is crucial. So 20 minutes is good, 40 minutes is better, 60. Might go up to 100% with 40 minutes. <laughs> Never know. One uh, last point I'd like to say is, yeah. you know, 10 years ago, I probably wasn't the best at communicating from the guy's perspective and saying, oh, this is what I really want, or I'd love to try this. And you almost kind of sit there and just hope certain things will happen, I guess. Um, but, and this may just be me too. I might be on my own island. But once you start communicating things mm -hmm. you're curious about or want to try or want to do, it becomes so easy because then the person actually knows. And if they're into it, then it's like, then all of a sudden you have everything you've ever wanted. And yeah. all it took was just bringing up this and maybe you bringing this up to him, you know, not not during sex or not before or just after, like you were saying, Yeah, might have him all of a sudden open up and then you'll really come together. Something I just thought of as you're saying this is like sitting down, if you guys drink wine, have a glass of wine, kombucha, tea, whatever that looks like for you, but sit down and write a list, each of you, privately, you write a list of things you want to try, you know, fantasies, things like that, whether it's just watching porn together, trying a certain move, write it down on your list and then trade lists, read them and see if anything lines up. Yeah. But I think it's an easy way to like, it's not embarrassing. You don't have to like say it out loud. It makes That's it more true. approachable. I, I will say that it will also, if you're doing it when you're, when you're not actually in the midst of having sex, if you're at a restaurant having dinner and you have this conversation, somebody's going to get hard. Someone's going to get <laughs> wet. Just having the conversation, it's going to ignite some of these feelings. It's natural. I've done this. I yeah. know. I'm not, this isn't my first. First rodeo. This is not my first conversation <laughs> like this. Okay. I'm clipping that but, audio. But I definitely know that if you, uh, go shopping together in some of the toy stores that are online. That's also a fun way to have it, conversations. It's a lot of fun. You'll say, yeah. gee, this looks like something I've ever seen before. And when they came, you know, a couple of years ago, they came out with the uh, with Bluetooth devices on your phone. Oh, I, I decided I'm going to have a great time. I went shopping on Bluetooth devices and said, this is fantastic. These things are great. There you go. Wow. Yeah. There you go. How technological and advanced of you. Oh, yes. I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm tec technically disadvantaged. I am not. I know you're not. <laughs> there I'm we just go. surprised where it extends to. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess. I started using AI in the bedroom. <laughs> so, oh, I can see it. Okay, moving along. <laughs> yes. From the chin dildo to uh, the, chin dildo. the Bluetooth devices. <laughs> the glasses. <laughs> I'm surprised that thing didn't have Bluetooth. <laughs> not back in that day. Yeah. But today they do. <laughs> I mean, there there are devices you can go shopping with, and you can have a lot of fun as you're going up and down the aisle. I mean, play oh, with I, your phone. I've, I've seen it. There you go. They're there. Another one of this week's partners is ZocDoc. Maybe it's the age I'm at, or maybe it's just becoming more well-informed thanks to grad school and TikTok. But I feel like a lot of us are in a place where we're trying to really get our health under control and feel really good. But that can be hard without the right healthcare team. Which is where ZocDoc comes in. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can even filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Me right now, I'm struggling with my tonsils. They're inflamed. I don't know what's happening with them. And with ZocDoc, I'm going to go on there, find a specialist that can help me address this because I don't know if getting my tonsils out at 29 is a thing, 
but boy, do I want it. And I know ZocDoc's going to work because it has led me to amazing doctors in the past. My gynecologist I found on ZocDoc and the way I found her was reading all of those patient reviews. I scour the reviews on the provider before I see them. I know how they treat their patients, their bedside manner. ZocDoc is seriously amazing, especially if you need care fast. The average wait time to see a doctor when booked on ZocDoc is just 24 to 48 hours. So if you're ready to try it for yourself, go to ZocDoc.com slash FKS and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash FKS. ZocDoc.com slash FKS. Moving along. Number three. Hey, Dad. I hope you're doing okay. You can call me E. Hello, E. I, 29 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 38 male, for about six years now. We've been living together for at least four years, and our relationship was always pretty great. But lately, he has been showing some opinions that really bother me, especially regarding the LGBTQ plus community. My dad is gay, and he has been with my stepdad for almost 18 years. In 2017, they got married, and my boyfriend refused to go to the wedding. I was really devastated at the time because it was such a special day for me as a daughter as well. We fought, almost broke up, but we were able to sort everything out in the end. Later, he apologized to both my parents and myself and said he regretted not going to their wedding. Anyways, the other day while talking about having kids, he expressed some really concerning opinions on how to raise them, saying that he is going to teach them what he believes is the right way that boys like girls and girls like boys. I always tried to get into his head that LGBTQ plus people are born this way. It's not something anybody chooses, but he was raised at a very homophobic church and still has this fucked up idea. I'm seriously considering not having children at all because I don't think I could respect him as a father or even as a husband with this kind of thoughts. What do I do? Could I spend the rest of my life with someone who I don't agree with? Could I raise children with him? The world is already such a cruel place for the community. They don't need that kind of thinking at home. He says he is going to love them the same way if they are gay, but I'm afraid of the future. Thanks for listening. Also, Morgan and Justin, I love you guys. And of course, you too, Jerry. Shout out from Brazil. Love Brazil. Yeah. All right. Look. This is a very, very, very to the core conversation that you're living with this guy. And when you are different at the core, there's an opening, there's a fracture in the relationship. And that fracture can heal or that fracture can become as wide as the Grand Canyon. And that's something that you're going to have to figure out real quick as you're going forward, because you're going to, there are people out there. There, How many billion people are in in the world? I don't know, eight-ish. So there is, there is another guy out there or mate for you that may not have that, you know, that, that, that defining feeling that that's part of his core. And I will just say, I think, I think you can have some different views than yes, your partner. You can you don't have to agree on everything, but I think this is a core. This is a this is a core value and I want to get something clear. It's it's not a difference of opinions. It's a difference of believing if certain people deserve basic human rights, mm-hmm. happiness, love, the freedom to do whatever they want. Like that's the difference. Like yeah, you can have different political views, but when it's a difference of how you view other people mm-hmm. and the basic human rights they deserve, mm-hmm. that's where it starts to really become an issue. And so, do you want to stay with someone who looks at those people as less than or would you? No, I wouldn't stay with this person. No. 2017 when they didn't show up to the wedding, I would have been done. That's what I was thinking. Done. This is my dad. This is one of my most favorite people in the world. And you're not going to show up to support him? By the way. To support me on this day? By right. the way. Done. By the way. Ready for this one? She is who she is, partially because of the man that raised her. Yeah. It's an, an influence in her life. I, I'm not going to say you are who you are only because of me. But you are who you are 
and what some of the feelings you have because of some of the experiences that you got to share with me. A hundred percent. So I, I really want you to weigh that one out. And I'm, when I say that, I'm saying this to our, to OP. This is a, this is a, a, a defining, you know, element in your relationship. It's a pillar. So you got to think, got to think it through and have a discussion. And if they are going to be, you know, this person that's, that can't accept some of this stuff, you have to really say, can I live with a person that cannot accept this stuff? Because it could really come back later and bite you in the ass. It probably will come later and bite you in the ass. And you're going to say, why did I stay here when I could have and invested all of this, my best years of my life with this, with this element when I didn't have to, that person will find someone that will support that element and have the same feeling. They'll have, they'll have wonderful life together. I'm not going to say it's going to be right or wrong, but they'll be, it'll be right for them. Don't put yourself in a place where you're going to be suffering and having to deal with this shit when you don't need to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, physically, mentally, sure. I think you could spend the rest of your life. I think you could survive that survive but it's, but it's not going to be a happy fun life well a partnership this is a life is a partnership with each other it's about growth it's about experiencing everything with one another and if you do experience everything with one another and you're able to successfully grow with it, each other and those experiences and get better and better with the new experiences you don't have to ever worry about the problem that you were concerned with because it just grows right but a problem between uh you and him, that is nothing compared to a problem with your kids in between you and him. Oh yeah. That will uh that will drive that will drive the dagger right through the whole thing. That will end this thing really quick. And I do not he, there's so many conflicting statements. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna raise them this way, but if they aren't that way, I'm still gonna love them the same. No, he won't. I don't believe that for a second. I feel like this this whole thing, I mean, it's, as Jerry would say, I think you're on a path to destruction. I think you say, I think you use a really good word here too, where you say, yeah, you could survive. And that's the thing, you'll survive, but you won't live. Like, don't you want to really live? And there's a comment here that I kind of want to highlight. Okay. I'm seriously considered not having children at all. That was that that's a killer. Because okay. I don't think I could respect him as a father or even as a husband with this kind of thought. What's the point? <laughs> so you're giving up one of the biggest aspects of life. Though I understand people not everyone chooses to have kids. And I, that's your choice. But it sounds like this person does want them. Exactly. And she's sacrificing yep. and giving up not having kids or trying to have kids just to stay with this person because of his beliefs and yep. the fear that if they did have kids and one of them was a part of the community, why stay with this person? I think we're all shaking our heads on this one. It's, and, and I think that she in her, in her own right is shaking her head and she knows the answer. Like so many- 29, best years so, of your life, so, baby. So many of us know the answer. We're afraid to we're afraid to implement the answer. You know, we have a theme that is the next one we're recording tonight. Yeah. And it's literally called uh 2020 in hindsight. Mm-hmm. And I think this is one of those stories that if we ask this person, you know, for a check-in five years down the road, mm-hmm. what would that check-in look like? What would your update be? And I would hate to get an update back. And obviously, this show, take everything we say with a grain of salt. We are not professionals. We're just people living our lives. Giving, Three people. We're like you. We just, we have opinions. We're just trying to thrive out here, but we're, we give everyone advice that we would give our friends, our family. We're just family, trying to help. Our loved ones. And I would hate to get an update down the, down the road. That's like, I stayed with him and I really regret it. Like, I'm not happy and I, I regret not having kids or, you know, whatever that update would look like. Mm-hmm. And I think Justin says it a lot. Like, don't go through life wondering what if and you shouldn't go through life life having regrets like you get one Mm -hmm. unless we get reincarnated but like this one enjoy it i agree unless you're thinking about you know leaving me don't don't follow that what if just push (laughs) push that one push that one down under 
No, I don't think you have anything to worry about. So are you saying after, you know, the best years of your life at 29, it's all downhill from there? No. No, but there are great years in I your life. I think you're entering the best years, aren't you? You know, they're they're all interesting. Give me optimism, Jerry. Every every year is every year brings me something totally new and it grows. And I and that's that the beauty of it. It really is. They it's, have a pain here or there, but that is very true. <laughs> my knee hurts. My it's like what happened to my heel? We gotta get my you foot? moving. We'll get you moving and doing some more stretching. Uh, yoga, there's, there's, yoga. There's something going on in my foot, but you know, look. It, all in all, I'm certainly living life. I'm traveling, doing work. I'm creating. True. I'm making people very happy with, with some of the things that that I bring to their life. That it delights them, makes their life. Yeah, you got Flirt. us and the show and we this got, family. It's all good stuff. There's nothing negative about any of this stuff. So, yeah. and I always say that the universe tests us. It make it takes us like a palm tree. It bends us back, and you might say, oh, "I can't take anymore." And then they look down upon you and it says, "Yeah, you can take a little bit more." <laughs> the universe testing us. I don't know if we've had that, but that might be what this one should actually it be de- called. It definitely tests you consistently. Okay. Next story. Another one of this week's partners is HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So you can skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And consistently good. Yeah, we're a pretty big HelloFresh household. You're a big plugger of it. What is your favorite part about all the HelloFresh meals we've had? They're just always good. And it's always fun to make them. And I like bringing us all together. Yeah, I love watching you cook them for us too. Yeah, well, maybe maybe I can try to enjoy watching you cook it. Yeah, maybe. With HelloFresh, you can pick from 40 weekly recipes and there's over 100 different add-on items you can choose from each week. And I would say I'm a more picky eater, but I feel like everything HelloFresh has sent our way, I have actually loved eating. You have never not eaten anything that I've prepared out of HelloFresh. I'm a picky eater. You're a, you're a pain. I especially love that they have quick and easy meals and 15-minute meals. So if you're getting ready to try it, fall might be the perfect time because HelloFresh has a fall lineup full of delicious dinners and lots to choose from. And fall is harvest for a lot of us. And HelloFresh gets top-notch produce from farm to table in seven days. So you know you're getting fresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50FKS and use code 50 FKS for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50FKS and use code 50FKS for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This is number four. See, I'm doing good. Four. Number four. Four. Okay. Trigger warning for this next one, you guys. It does contain talks of suicide. Markers are in the YouTube description, so feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, just fast forward a bit on audio if you feel that this one is not for you. How do I tell my suicidal husband I want a divorce? I, 28 female, and my husband, 32 male, have been together for four years and married for a year and a half. My husband has major depression and has an addictive personality. When we got together, things were rocky, but our relationship became something wonderful. Something changed when we got married. He started to become really toxic, and I no longer feel like I can really rely on or trust him. I told him multiple times that I was unhappy, and his reply is that if I leave, he will unalive himself. So I stayed. Things got worse with his drinking and his addiction to his phone and video games. He has attempted in the past twice. He no longer believes in therapy or couples therapy. How do I get through to him? that I want a divorce. Ideal outcome, a divorce with him still remaining safe. I think that you have to really reach out to a crisis center. I would agree. This is professional level of need. This is a cri- This is a crisis center uh, call and you have to go still focus on your own life. You don't have to... Uh, certainly sacrifice your life for this. It, you already know that it's a wrap. And I, I, it, it's unfair to put all that burden on you to have the threat on you. Again, make the call. He is not safe to be by himself. He, he's done everything to make sure that we, we recognize he's going to hurt himself, but I'm not staying in the marriage. Well, you have to then 
also look out for yourself. Are you safe? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be okay Mm -hmm. and walk out of this without him hurting you yeah so i think you know this is a crisis level intervention you you definitely need professional help i know he doesn't believe in therapy or couples therapy but you need a therapist you need to get out safely um there's a lot of resources we can share with this i would you know domestic abuse looks like many different things it can be verbal it can be physical it can be mental I would say this is at a point of being very mental, very, you know, psychological abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, you it's know, dangerous. It, period. This is very Simple, dangerous. So you are in a very dangerous territory and you need to find your own safety. You do. And this is a definitely an intervention and you need to get out and seek professional help. Mm-hmm. This is um, a bit above our pay grade. But I know a lot of people deal with stuff like this, with partners that, you know, threaten them that, if mm-hmm. you don't stay, something bad's going to happen. Yeah. And, and whether they're and, serious and by, or and not. By, and by mm-hmm. the way, in times things bad happen, you need to get, definitely get, you need to get professional assistance in this thing. Well, in the, I, you know, it the, reeks of it. the, the fact that he's attempted in the past, you know, this is probably the worst form of manipulation to be in and it just the thing is is if you split and he does do something to himself mm-hmm. you can't carry the burden it, it, it's all it on him it really is not on you it is not your responsibility to keep someone else from doing this it it just can't be i know that that guilt will carry forward but it really truly you cannot live the rest of your life that way No, and it sounds like she has really tried to support him and to, you know, get therapy and do the things to make a positive difference. And I had um, Michaela Oakland, who has her own podcast and um, has an account called She Rates Dogs. And I had her on my show back in the beginning. And she said something to me once, and I wish I could remember the exact quote, but Something along the lines of like, we all have our own mental health struggles. We all Mm -hmm. have our own issues, but it doesn't mean we can make them other people's. Mm -hmm. Other people can support us and lend us a helping hand now and again, but we are still responsible for handling our own mental health. And I think that's the case here. Um, And you're at a point where you need to look out for yourself and being safe. And Let, let me ask you a question. Getting out. And you answer for her. Have been have ha, has been in this relationship helped him? Because if he's still suicided today, he is not well. He's not healthy. You know, I think depression is a disease. I mm-hmm. mean, it's something I have some friends that are dealing with. I I struggle with depression again, but he has major depression, and mm-hmm. it is really hard. There's. There's some amazing treatments out there now. Um, I think one that I'm really looking into learning more about um, just out of general curiosity is like ketamine therapy. And there has been like I read a story about a woman who was basically like just catatonic, like could not function, was just not living life and started pursuing ketamine therapy and is like happy. Mm-hmm. For the first time in her life. What is ketamine? Ketamine is a drug that's used um, oftentimes to tranquilize horses. Mm-hmm. But when used in the right way with the guidance of a professional is now being used to treat major depression. Wow. But it all goes back to the to square one. Help. Everything leads back to getting assistance. Yeah. So that's, I don't want to cut it short, but I want to really make sure that this is, Exactly the what you said. It's out. It's it's out of our pay grade, mm-hmm. and we all know one thing: you need to get this person assistance, but you need to get yourself out of it. Yeah, I think you can support from afar. Mm-hmm. You know, be a friend, but this is not a partner. This is not a healthy, happy relationship for you. And um, just to note for the ketamine, it is FDA approved for treatment resistant depression. Mm-hmm. So if this is something that you know he has really struggled with his whole life and nothing works. Medication doesn't work. Therapy doesn't work. That could be an option for him, but 
you don't need to still stay with him. And Mm -hmm. I think your first step is honestly getting out. Go stay with family, friends, but you cannot be in that house. You need to create distance um, and get out. Okay. Okay, last one. Number five. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Justin. I need advice on my situation. My husband and I have been having issues specifically with our parents and setting boundaries. Ooh, I love this one. <laughs> this is good. I'm going to really enjoy this one. My husband, male, 28. Me, female, 24. We recently got married this year and had not lived together before being married. I have one sibling who is in high school. She cannot drive yet as she is 14. And he has three siblings, one in his senior year of high school, old enough to drive. And the other is an adult who is 22. And the last is a sister who is in middle school. All of his siblings still live with his parents. This is very important as it's part of the story. My mom and dad both work. And sometimes they ask me to drive about 20 minutes from my house back to where they live. We live in LA, so by the time my sister is out, it's traffic time to get to my house, and it's about a 40-minute drive. Occasionally, I can pick my sister up. However, there have been times when I have had to tell my mom, I'm sorry, I can't today, as I have other things to do, and the drive is very draining for me and takes me far away from home to the other side of town. My husband and his parents all work together. My husband has been leaving work early to pick up his siblings, and I have caught him multiple times coming home later, and I look on Find My Friends, and he is at his mom's house or at one of the other siblings' school. He doesn't tell me he picked them up until something comes up, and then he tries to hide it, as I had already had a conversation telling him that they are not his responsibility, and as much as it pains us, we cannot go out of our way to be picking them up. I think that his older brother is old enough to drive and hasn't wanted to. That's on him, though. Everyone has offered to teach him, and he could not care any less. And this brother still lives with them, and I think the least he could do is pick up his own siblings. But he bitches about doing anything for them. I think it's up to his parents to find someone else to pick them up, as my husband has to go away from our home and has to leave work early to be here for his siblings. Am I wrong for trying to set boundaries here? Or what can I do to make him understand? We have been trying to establish boundaries with both parents as they make too many comments about our lives. I got a double take on this. Let's hear all of them. Both. All. Two for one. Two for one. I am the firm believer, gut feeling, you guys have your own life now, period. And you have to worry about your own life. I also understand being a part of a family unit and it takes a village to raise a family. I get both sides of this thing. But you guys are at the part now, and, and by the way, there's expenses to go back and forth to pick people up. Gas right now is five fifty a gallon, and she's going 40 minutes. I mean, so I imagine she's going like from West LA to Buena Park, and then having to, you know. That's a long time in a car. That's a, that, that, that's a big ask. Mm-hmm. So, Each way is 40. Right. So it's like. It's a big ask. Yeah. So there yeah. are there are other avenues that we have in LA. We are also from LA. Yeah, we understand the transportation systems here, and going to pick up a, a a kid who lives three miles from school, there are Ubers. There are other things that the parents can do to implement. To, and how old are the siblings? I thought they're they're teenagers. Uh, yeah, one is a senior in high school, one is in middle school, and one is twenty two. Those are his siblings. Mm-hmm. Her sister 14. is 14, I believe. So look, you, everybody wants to make sure that 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 the uh, the young adult is secure and we're not going to have an issue with somebody trying to hurt them. And Uber is an invitation to having someone hurt somebody. It's also expensive. It's unrealistic for a lot of people. But there's public transportation in LA. I took the bus every day after work when I was at UCLA. I, I love the bus. I love the train. You do. So there are different avenues. Like I said, we don't know where they are, but there are other answers. And the parents are going to really have to realize that that as much as they want to count on these people to be part of their village, they're trying to get their own lives dialed in. And you have to back off at this point in time. 
So it's a volunteer thing. I mean, he the, the he's feeling guilty. He's not telling her because he doesn't want to be able to to have to address an answer for it. He is not going to bash her at all for whatever she's going to go do with her with her sibling. This is that she doesn't want to do it because it's exhausting for her. Yeah. Now, if he wants to go do his siblings and he says they're all in the same area and I'll pick yours up too, and that's something that he wants to do, great. But she's she's defined that she doesn't want to do it. And I think that more importantly, it's her definition of what's good for her and not good for her. She doesn't have to go implement it on him. If he feels it's something that's okay to do and I can I can manage this, then that's his gig. Yeah, well, that's what I'm curious about. And I don't know if you guys were either. But for me, you know, he works with his parents. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means he works at a family business where he has the flexibility to kind of do what he wants. Mm -hmm. So if his job isn't going to be threatened because he's leaving early to pick mm -hmm. them up, okay, he's not hurting anyone there. If he's still getting home at a reasonable time where they wouldn't be doing stuff anyways, mm -hmm. it's not really hurting her. So I'm just kind of curious, like, is this actually hurting you or is this more so about, hey, let's set a boundary. I don't want you doing this because if that's the case, then it just might feel a little controlling. Right. Mm -hmm. Is she projecting her dislike from picking up her siblings right. she onto him doing mm -hmm. his? And if they come together and say, yeah, we'd both prefer to not have to do this. That's one thing. And then setting the boundary looks like this. Hey, parents, when we do this, this is a favor. Mm -hmm. This is not an expectation. Yes. That is the boundary. But the only difference here is I'm not getting the full sense that he is absolutely opposed and hates doing this. I would I think, agree. I think it's I her. It's some weird dynamic between them because the boundary is not that hard to set. Mm -mm. It's, Really, before a boundary, let's let's get on the same page here because I'd be very curious to hear his side. I would I would say there's probably some cultural expectations here, though, about like the family unit. Everyone still helps out. But I will say then one of his siblings is 22. One of them is a senior. They're also old enough to get their younger sibling mm -hmm. home. They're definitely old enough to take public transportation. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have to feel guilty. But if he wants to then that's another story and you guys need to get on the same page. Unless you live in New York, I do, I, I mean, I guess some people are afraid or they have, you know, trauma from cars and things yeah. like that. But just in my frame of re reference, I cannot imagine not wanting to get the freedom of having a license. I was there day of. My little however, brother. However, my, yeah. in, in my, she 16, she was driving. Taylor, I couldn't get him into a car until I had to take him at, eight, at, at over the age of eighteen cross country. And yeah, force Taylor him, didn't get his license for a long time. He had no interest. Interesting. And, and just I, don't care. And he I didn't need it. And we live in an Uber world. And I know that even when I was seeing somebody else in the past, and she, her son did not want to get a license. He believed in Ubering. He didn't want to have to deal with parking the car. He didn't care but, about it. Yeah, that. maintenance of a car, insurance. I mean, so it's a nightmare. Or you live in New York City, you know. There's just a lot of different reasoning. To, and I think that the one thing that we really have come to terms, I think that we all kind of got that vibe. This is her issue. This isn't his issue. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe We, he, need a, we needed more info our, our on we him. Need, our, gut, our gut was telling us that. I honestly, I'm not sure. I'm just curious about yeah. the actual dynamic. And I think, you know, coming as if he's the oldest son, which it sounds like he is, there's that oldest son and that familial responsibility where you feel that you have to help your parents and give back, mm -hmm. especially, you know, given if there's cultural things associated with that. I'm mm -hmm. thinking I'm envisioning a Hispanic family where mm -hmm. maybe they're really tight knit and that's kind of the expectation that mm -hmm. generations help other generations. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. But, you know, there is another comment. Both parents make comments about our lives. Shut that down. Like, you can still help out in some ways and give rides, but also not get comments made about your relationship. I agree on that you one fully. You absolutely can shut them down and say, hey, you know what? You are not allowed to comment on our relationship. We're shutting you down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Let's um I'd love a little bit more info on this, maybe an update. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Conference call. Conference call, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You know what it is? It's uh, come to group session. Group. We open it up in group. Both of you. Let's go. Yeah. Patreon group. Let's go. Find us. Yeah. But and, um, we're, and we're due to a group. It's been a month. We are. We ought to figure out we're both our schedules are so misaligned September. It's gonna be challenging, but might happen right at the end. Of yeah. September. Yeah, very end. Well, you're so t- if you're you- hearing this episode, you got time to join. Time. Time. Boy. Time. Time. Okay. That's all I got for this episode. This is the show. So we want to thank you for joining us. We're glad we're all back in the saddle together. Hey. It's, uh, it's, it's, I have missed it. I certainly have missed uh, hearing from you guys and um, being a part of it. So we will bring back the saddle. So do me a favor and jump over to Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe. We have broken 30,000. I did see yeah. that. And we broke 2 million listens on audio. So Ooh-wee. we're breaking it. And, um, but we, we, but my year, my, I really want to be at 100K by end of the year. So let's we, say 50. So if you guys have, goal. if anyone has any suggestions on how I can do it, Maybe you want to give dad advice because dad doesn't only just give you advice. You guys can <laughs> pop in and see, you know, an unhelping pop. Because you're due. He, you're due for some. Because I'll listen. Yeah. I, I do listen when you have advice. Yeah. I don't ever shut you down. I always digest it. In fact, this, us doing the show was it the advice of these two. I said, nah. And they said, no, we're going to, it's going to be great. We're going to give it a shot. And you said, it's going to be great. And here we are. And we'll bring back the saddle for you. Uh, I doubt that. (laughs) He keeps trying to ignore me, but we're bringing it back. (laughs) Anyway, so uh, jump on over to Patreon. We have a Patreon for you. Yeah, I'm going to give him a little sneak peek right now. Okay. This one is titled, My Husband, Male 27, Wants to End Our Marriage Because He Has the Urge to Cheat. Ooh, well, he's being honest. It's going to be juicy. (laughs) Going to be juicy. All right. So that's it. We'll see you in a few minutes. Just jump on over and we're there. Bye. Bye. Bye.